L.A. sheriff and politicians spar over homeless debacle. And so here in L.A., the homelessness has not come to an end, and I don't think it really will. It actually, it has grown since the pandemic. It's gotten worse, and now there's a lot of back and forth arguing over how to resolve the issue. And so what I always knew is that when they can't figure out out a way to resolve the issue is to try to hide the issue. And that's what has been happening for so many years. And so you have a sheriff and you have these politicians that are fighting this issue that's basically been a problem for many, many years. And the main issues with the rising cost of uh, rentals and the housing market Nobody really looks at that issue. They look at how to get rid of homelessness or how to hide homelessness or how to fix homelessness. And there is no quick fix for homelessness because each person, each situation is different than the next. And so California's governor, Gavin Newsom, and local politicians refuse to declare a state of emergency or employ common sense measures to combat the destruction created by homeless encampments. And so they're focusing on the encampments that are around the city that have caused uh, some issues for business owners and people who are living in those areas that feel uncomfortable seeing these encampments and then having to walk uh, along the sidewalk, you don't feel safe, and in, in public places, you'll start to see these encampments, and it, a lot of this has pretty much spread in the uh, L.A. region, and so now they're trying to go back and forth on how to combat these issues. So throughout the county of L.A., county sheriff um, told Washington Examiner about how his feelings were on the issue. So his name is Sheriff Alex Villanueva, who sent out letters to Newsom and the LA County Board of Supervisors detailing the horrors of LA's struggles under the weight of the expanding homeless population. And so he asked for the state of emergency declaration to free up federal funds to combat this problem, but the politicians had rebuffed his request. So they didn't want to look at it in that sense. So they are ignoring what is a crisis in our midst, and we need to resolve it, Villanueva said. So the officers are often sent out on calls for, you know, public um, disturbance, or there could be fighting, there could be drug dealing, there could be um, uh, issue with safety, public safety. And so they're seeing another side of the homeless situation than the politicians are. So he asked for the state of emergency declaration to free up the federal funds to combat it, but they're ignoring this issue. So his July 8 letter to Newsom was ignored and several exchanges with the board between June the 23rd to July the 28th, it had no results. And so Rather than responding themselves, the county supervisors delegated the tasks to the county council office, which irked the sheriff, via the way of paraphrase, the council's letter because it was completely redacted. And so the letter basically said, mind your own business because there is no emergency here, via the way of told the Washington Examiner. So... That's the way it was conveyed to the sheriff. So it said that the county has a robust outreach program, but there is nothing you can describe as robust because I've seen the problem grow in the past 10 years. And so a lot of people have seen this. I've seen it grow as well. So I have to be honest and say that it wasn't as bad as it is. Not saying it wasn't there, but it has gotten worse over the years. And so I feel, in my personal opinion, 
outside of this article that it also has to do with, uh, well, now you can include the pandemic as being one of the issues and the job losses. But before that, you know, we had a homeless issue and a lot of it had to do with not having enough income to pay for the high rents and the high cost of living. So that was another issue that has been going on as well. So when Villanueva sent the board the second letter asking for a personal reply instead of the county council, he received another letter from the lawyers. And so this file in the December 3rd, 2018 file photo, an LA County Sheriff Alex Villanueva speaks during a ceremony in Monterey Park, California. Villanueva says inmates at the jail tried to infect themselves with the coronavirus by sharing a cup of water and a mask and showed surveillance videos from the two units of North County Correctional Facility in Castaic. And so the footage that you see, which it was released on the news and you can see uh, Monday, May 11th, 2020, it captured inmates in one unit. They were sharing a cup of water and others in a second unit. They were sharing a mask. And he said that 21 of those inmates in the units, they later had diagnosed positive with COVID-19. So we got another letter back, even more snitty, stating that it's privileged and confidential and we can't disclose the contents of this, he said. So Villanueva has taken it up upon himself to combat the homeless problem as he sees an influx getting worse. And so recently, his deputies began patrolling Venice Beach, which is a huge issue now because you can't even go to the beach like it used to be. You could go to the boardwalk. And I remember and I recall this a uh, number of years uh, ago where you could see the performers, you could go out and eat, you could look at the, the sun, the sunset, and you see the waves and you take in all the sights of Venice Beach. And that is really to be honest that was before they cleaned up that was no more and it was looked at as a place should you go should you not go is it safe and now with this covid is it even safe to go because the homeless encampments line the beach of the boardwalk and there's fighting and even though people try to go for the outside eateries um it just doesn't feel the same as it as it once was. So in an effort to curtail assaults, robberies, and fires that plagued that area, his efforts were not welcomed by the city officials who have contracted LAPD for service. And so when there's violence, when there's fires, when there's something breaking out regarding to the homeless encampments, who is called oftentimes the police, but there was some criticism met with the police's presence and how they handled the situation. Even though there had been multiple um, signatures um, with uh, residents that live in the area who had complained about the violence and a lot of the things that were going on along that boardwalk. And so California currently has 180,000 homeless people and 80,000 of those who live in LA County, Villanueva said. So this is about one third of the nation's homeless. Um, so recently Newsom invited the world's homeless population to come experience the California dream while dedicating an additional 12 billion in aid. And so residents are being held hostage in their local communities, Vienna Waiver wrote in the first board letter. Residents and businesses owners should not be subject to walking around piles of trash and feces in their neighborhoods, business, parks, and communities. So he credited the homelessness with starting a massive wildfires that you see with their outdoor kitchens in the mountain regions because in those areas, you'll see homeless encampments, even in the mountain areas. And that's why we see some of the fires that somehow start more often. So sher sheriff deputies are unable to patrol those areas adequately because of the cuts due to the defund of the police movement, he says, via the labor road. So this is how it 
interferes with that type of situation. So in his second letter to the board, Villanueva said, it's, it is clearly evident that the robust services are being provided um, are not really working. So despite spending $6.5 billion over the last 10 years, nothing has changed. And the number of homeless have reached 80,000 people, he added. Villanueva then quoted a study saying that 10% of the Angelinos plan on leaving the area and about 40% increase from 2019. So some people that are in those areas that feel unsafe have moved to another area that they feel might be safe or are probably moved altogether. So failed police um, um, or failed policies, that is, and then the police not having enough, I guess, uh, jurisdiction over some areas, self-interest groups and political agendas are enabling a national crisis to fester, he wrote. So the Board of Supervisors did not respond to the request for comment, and I believe that's the end of the article. And so that's the issues that um, we're having here. Um, they also have arrest highlights, um, system flaws. So there's fighting back and forth because there's also, like I say, the different issues with homelessness. Not everybody is in the same situation. You also have the mentally ill you have people that are just coming out of incarceration and they maybe don't have any places to stay or maybe they stay somewhere for a while and then that doesn't last. Then you have families that are now becoming homeless. And so there's different levels of homelessness. You have people living out of motels and hotels, people living out of RVs, old RVs, people that are sleeping out of their cars or their vans. Um, people that are living from friend to friend or house to house or they're couch surfing. Then you have the extreme situations where there's a mentally ill and then you have people who have drug addictions and maybe they have a lot of other, uh, other um, issues going on. And you see homeless encampments where they're using tents and there's rows and rows of tents and people that are living on the streets. And so there's a lot of situations uh, that are going on. And I know what I've seen recently is they've got these, um, I guess maybe they, it's temporary. I don't know how good this is, but I've heard of co-living. Our rents are higher. And so people have resorted to becoming roommates or living with family members that they probably wouldn't have to live with before if rents weren't as high as they are. And then we have also the housing crisis as well. That's going to be an issue. Um, some people might have had a home um, and they lost their home because they lost their job. There's different situations. So having said that, you know, it, uh, from what I've seen, I, I do see the more of the homeless encampments. Um, even along um, areas in South LA, you'll see a lot of homeless uh, tents, tents, people um, that you know that possibly they maybe are not really worried about whether they have caught a disease like COVID. It doesn't look like they're much worried about that. It's more about living on the streets for some. Um, they choose, some people choose that over living in, in a shelter um, and shelters may have their rules and they might have a requirement or they might be overcrowded um, or you can only sleep for maybe so many nights and then you're back on the street so there could be a number of things going on and so with the population of homelessness that is growing as well you have to look at california the weather is also what draws people because they feel like maybe they can survive better in a warmer climate than in an area that is colder. Um, so that might be another reason why most of the people will come to um, a warmer area to, to be homeless uh, outdoors because they maybe can withstand the elements better um, than in 
a place like the Midwest or somewhere where it snows or it gets colder. And so you might not see as many of the encampments out there, of course, because of the weather is what sends people um, to a hotter uh, environment. So with, uh, but, you know, from what I've seen, a lot of what is said in here, um, not all of it is, is fabricated. I will say that. I don't believe, really, I believe that's just their their side of what they're seeing. And it isn't a fabrication. That's that's their opinion, and that's their side of what they're seeing. And a lot of what um, is said in here in this article with the homeless encampments on Venice and the beach and the beaches and the areas, um, that's why they uh, now have stricter laws about where you can have your tents and where you can sleep outside and where you cannot and so that they have already uh, started that and so but i still see the encampments um you know as they clean them up or they move them or relocate them um sometimes they move away not far from the areas where they can't be or they wait until things die down and then they, they're back where they were uh, slowly uh, and then they gradually pick up again where they left off. And so that's what the problem is. And it just seems like it has grown over the years. It has. So I have to say that I have seen it grow. It's gotten worse. And so it is dangerous. You know, there are areas that I've seen look like they're burned. A lot of clothing, a lot of feces. You'll see sometimes people actually defecating in in the street um and i guess maybe because they don't have um or they can't you know they can't use the public restrooms in unless they're actually buying something in the, those um, places those establishments and so if you're not purchasing anything then you can't you're not allowed to use the public restrooms so you have to uh, wait or go somewhere else where you're allowed or they end up going out in public or around where people are walking or driving and can see it. And so it's a lot of suffering we see happening and it's really sad. But anyway, having said that, I'm gonna let this video go. So this is not um, completely untrue, I will say that much. So I have seen it and it is sad and it's, it's, it's scary too because some of the encampments you'll see them if you're walking somewhere and you don't feel safe you don't know who's in there watching you um and you know like if you're walking along there with a purse you you know if you've seen some you know activity criminal activity in that area you don't feel safe walking along there so um having said that i'm gonna let this video go thanks for listening